What's up guys? Welcome back to another video here at the homestead. I haven't been here for a few weeks between me being sick, McKenna being sick, and our dogs being sick. We really haven't done much work here. Um, but three weeks ago, uh, me and dad kind of started, as you can tell from the title of this video, we started putting in a barbed wire fence. We've already got, you know, the front half and the back half of the barbed wire fence done. And today we just have a little midsection to do. So I'm going to go ahead and make a video and kind of show you guys what we're doing today. We have about a 650 foot stretch of barbed wire fence that's going along one side of our property. And we'll kind of show you guys the technique that we're using. Uh, it's low budget, um, limited materials, and really, it's really simple, honestly. We'll go ahead and get into it. About a week ago for this midsection, we saved this middle part for last because it was the most dense out of the whole section of fence. We saved it for last. Last week I came out here and went ahead and cleared out that section. I'll go ahead and roll that clip now. As you guys can see, I went ahead and cleared out that section. We're ready to go ahead and put up the fence. I'll, I'll show you guys, like I said, what we're doing. After I show you guys what we're doing here today, I'll, I'll kind of go over some pricing of things. Everything that we use today can be found at Tractor Supply. That's pretty much where I've gotten all the materials that we used. Really simple way to put up a barbed wire fence. It's not really complicated. Um, we're using metal T-post. And barbed wire and that's pretty much in a couple other tools let's go ahead and get into it guys we're down here at the middle section of the barbed wire fence looks like the workhorse down there dad has already kind of started stretching out this line so here's pretty much what we're doing here is tie it to one side of the tree we're using trees instead of fence posts kind of just save on money and time and you know we're really not trying to keep any like cattle or anything in here so we tie it here just like that and go to the other tree and we use a tool that I'll show you guys later to stretch the line. So that's the first step here in putting up the fence. After we stretch the line we'll go ahead and spread our T-post out and drive them into the ground with our post driver. Now that we got the fence post decently spaced out, they're not quite evenly spaced out, but we got them spaced out here and the next step is to then clip on the wire to the post. So what we're using to do that today is some fence clips. I'll show you what they look like here in a second. So we're going to start from the ground up and we're measuring about a foot from the ground and then we're going to connect these fence clips and they pretty much just slide right on here. I know it's not focusing too well. We're going to slide on like this. Dad's going to come through with the screwdriver and kind of twist this part right here around the wire. Here it comes now. Just like that. This is the very essential tool that you'll need to stretch the wire tight if you're doing it how we're doing it here. You can see Dad just ratchet straps it to the tree there, tightens it up. We get it real nice and tight. Got to unsnag it from everything down there. And then um, we just repeat the process. All right, guys, so it's starting to rain out here, so I'm going to go ahead and explain the things that we used. 
for the fence. So you saw kind of what we were doing today. We were wrapping the fence around some trees instead of using wooden posts. So in, if we were to use wooden posts, we would have had to buy posts, we would have had to buy concrete, we would have had to dig holes. And out here in these woods, it's real hard to, you know, use posts and dig holes because all the roots and things like that. So what we did was kind of an easier method. So I can go ahead and go over the supplies and materials that you'll need to build a or to put up a barbed wire fence like the one we did today. There are some materials that are absolutely necessary and then there's some things that are kind of just optional. Absolutely necessary is your barbed wire. What we chose to go with is 15.5 gauge barbed wire. Sorry guys, there's bugs everywhere out here. 15.5 gauge, four point barbed wire. This is uh, some of it that's left over. This is not the strongest barbed wire you can buy, but it's also not the thinnest barbed wire you can buy. So this is a good size for, you know, keeping in animals like goat. I don't know if it would be great for keeping in cattle it probably would work, but it's not the strongest. This is your essential barbed wire. We used three rolls. Well, not really three rolls, but we used about two rolls and a little bit more. Each roll contains 1,320 feet, and each roll cost about $69.99 at Tractor Supply. So... Two, we probably could have got by but with two rolls if we if we didn't use so many trees when we use the trees to wrap them to wrap around we lose a couple feet but we had to buy a third roll which kind of sucks because we only used about two strands out of the third roll so that is your first essential item that you'll need to do a barbed wire fence is barbed wire the second essential item is the T post that we used we used metal six and a half foot t-posts and we left about five feet out of the ground so we had about a foot and a half in the ground which is pretty sturdy and each one of those bundles of five cost $31.95 it's $6.39 per t-post um, which is really pricey if I were you and if I had a little bit more time I probably would have done some searching on Facebook marketplace or you know your neighborhood listings to kind of see if anybody had some t-posts for sale because t-posts can kind of get pricey and we used a good 40 to 50 of them for our six, 650 foot stretch and we were really spacing them out about 12 to 15 feet apart each um, roughly I mean if we were if we had to keep animals in or anything like that we would probably have to put a few more t-posts in between so that it's a little more sturdy so that's your second essential item like I said they're, pr they're pretty pricey I would definitely you can get them at tractor supply for $6.39 a piece about $32 a bundle or I would look um, on Facebook marketplace or Craigslist alright your third essential item is your tool to stretch the wire if you don't have a tool to stretch the wire what's gonna happen is your, your wire is gonna be really loose when trees fall on and stuff it's gonna just sag and over time you know your wire will naturally sag just because it's gonna lose some tension this is the easiest method that me and my dad found for stretching the wire so this tool can be bought at Tractor Supply as well. At Tractor Supply, this is $19.99. Essentially, let me show you how this works, guys. So you have this hook here, and this is what you hook onto the tree with your um, come along. You're going to hook this to the tree, and then this part is going to hook to the wire. So this slides up and down. And it's tapered. You can see that it's tapered. You're going to take the wire and put it in that little crack right there. 
You're going to twist it. See it twist on there just like that. And then once you pull it tight, the wire is really snug in there. You can see. So you hook this part to the tree and this part will be connected to the other tree on the other side and then you pull it real real tight. So this tool is absolutely essential for putting up a barbed wire fence. Now there is other ways that you can put in a barbed wire fence without this stretching tool. There's a couple other tools that you can kind of look up. The next essential item is your gloves. You need a good pair of gloves. You can look at my hands, kind of get beat up. You're going to get beat up, scratched up from the wire. Definitely need a solid pair of gloves. I think these gloves were like $15 at Tractor Supply, maybe a little more than that. And you can get leather gloves pretty much anywhere. The next item I have here is these fence staples and these these staples were used to staple to the trees and sometimes in between the T post we had a tree that kind of was just in line with the fence so we just stapled it to that tree instead of using another T post which would have cost another $7 these are the staples that we used and you really just hammer them right into the tree or your post or whatever you're using with your barbed wire fence these are eight gauge this is also kind of like a middle middle sized gauge not the biggest not the smallest but it worked good for us now there's a couple items that are kind of optional for you and one of those items is your fencing pliers. These pliers are for all kinds of fencing. They have a few different tools within this tool. I'll show you here. So right here you have your cutters. So that's where you can cut fence right there. Right here you have a place where you can pull out staples. Right here you can use it to bend your fence clips and then you also have like a hammer on it which you can also use for your fencing staples which it's not the best but it works so this tool right here cost about $36 I believe it is at tractor supply kind of an expensive tool but it really comes in handy that's that's one that's kind of optional another tool that I I didn't mention was a screwdriver so you saw how dad was using the screwdriver with the fence clips and I'll show you the fence clips right now these are the fence clips that came actually with the T post you can see they're kind of irregular in shape which makes it kind of nice this side here clips onto the fence and then this side here is the side that you wrap around. Now what dad was doing for a little extra security was squeezing this side as well so that both sides were kind of wrapped around that barbed wire fence to keep it in place. So these were free. These came with the fence post. They give you five for each fence post. Now we only did four strands. A lot of people will do five strands and that's mostly to keep it in cattle they'll do five strands so we we did four strands with our fence um, you can decide what's gonna work best for you a couple other items that are optional are like I said the fencing pliers and a tape measure tape measure can be used to measure the distance between your wiring really you can estimate that or eyeball it. We did about uh, 11 to 12 inches between our wires. Another item that you can find at Tractor Supply that you definitely need is the post driver. At Tractor Supply, 
you can get a post driver for $36.99. That's the one that we used today. You saw the yellow one. That will be absolutely necessary to get those posts into the ground. Some people think that you can just hammer them to the ground, and what will happen is you'll bend the post. So you want to make sure that you can get a nice post driver to drive those posts straight into the ground. And I would also get another hand to help you do it to kind of keep them straight because they bend pretty easily and they'll also twist. That is pretty much it for today, guys. We got the fence done. I'm super happy about it. It only took about two to three days of work. The biggest issue was clearing out that section for the fence. Other than that, putting up the fence really is just, it's a simple task. Any of y'all out there can do it. We will see you guys next time when we're back out here on the homestead.